All right. Well, this is my first. I'm Illustrator John McCoy, and this is my first unboxing video I've ever done in my life. And I have an unboxing knife. How perfect. I already opened this, though, so I guess I can pretend like... I'm just kidding. There. That's me unopening it. These are um, oil paints I'm going to be starting. I'm going to be starting with... Is there something in here? Maybe these are my brushes. That would be smart. I have a microphone right there next to it, so you'll get these nice ASMR. I have actually done oil painting in college before, so I know exactly what is needed. Yeah, these are the brushes. Everybody knows brushes, but not everybody knows that if you get oil paints, you need um, Gamsel. Odorless. I hope that's the right thing. Isn't Gamsel odorless? Gamsel's an odorless mineral spirit. <laughs> nice. I was right. Gamsel used to thin oil colors. Clean brushes. That's what I was really going to use it for. Is to clean brushes, but not everybody knows this. When you use any water-based paint, you kind of get used to using water, but oil paints is not that way. Water and oil don't mix. I think most people know that, though. These are some really nice Grumbacher brushes. I'm OCD about this kind of stuff. Plus, it's such a nice black color. I only got three brushes because I think you only really need like a small, medium, large. I'm going to try to use this one as much as possible because usually, as I learned in art college, you're supposed to work large to small. Try to work as large as long as you can, and then you can get into details later. Or you can do it out of order if you know how to do that without screwing up the painting, but let's be honest, who's actually there? <laughs> Completely, that is. That. And then one more little brush. I'm probably going to cut some of this stuff out. Probably not going to have a whole lot of paint. This is the nice small one. These are supposed to be hog bristle brushes, but that looks synthetic to me, but I guess what do I know? This one's really wrapped around there. Perfect. Three brushes. <clears throat> now I get to the good stuff, right? Oh, these are, this must be one of the blacks or whites because I can only afford big paints like this with those colors. Oh. Gambling artist colors. Oil paints are really expensive, especially if you get like the cadmiums. This guy wasn't that expensive, but I can get it out. Yes, it's titanium white. I get more of this stuff anyways because a lot of paint is that. This is probably, this could be another titanium white. I forget exactly what I got. It's 150 milliliters. <clears throat> Sticker's still with me on my fingernail. A lot of painting is about the lights and the darks. A lot of things are neutral anyways, and there are a few places where, unless in the modern world, you encounter really bright colors. Ivory black, so I have my white and black. I've set up a basic palette based off of my experience. Here is Galkid Light. This is a medium. Basically, you can um, extend. I, was, I thought this was going to be more, oh, it's because it's light. I thought it was going to be more uh, viscous, but it's not. It's a little more, it's like oil, really. I guess I should have paid attention to the light. I think the light is what makes it... Um, less viscous. The last one I had in college was like a gel almost. These, what are these? Here's three oils. Look at this. It's the royal lineup. Got dioxazine purple, Indian yellow. I picked my favorite colors. Uh, on a budget you can only afford so much of Indian yellow. Payne's gray. It's a really good color. Let's see what else we got here. I didn't go with a basic palette, obviously. I went a little more extensively, but I could have went with the primaries and got bigger of them, but there are certain color effects. I wanted to get, like, I wanted to be able to cheap everything, and if you just get the basic primaries, it's not. You can't actually, I don't think you can achieve everything with, the with like, ultramarine blue, cad red, cad yellow. I don't think you could actually get, I think usually, like, things like orange, um, are difficult to pull off. 
certain bright oranges. So cadmium yellow, I was just mentioning that one. Yellow ochre, I like the earth tones a lot. Those I would group with my titanium white and ivory black. Cadmium red deep. This one is going to be, I did get uh, alizarin crimson, but this one's going to be different than alizarin crimson. Yeah. It's almost the color of the red recording button. That's the cads. And then <clears throat> this is alizarin crimson. Cad red is like, I don't know if you'd ever find a cad red in nature. I mean, unless on some kind of exotic sea creature or bird, maybe on a, one of those parrots, you might find some of that naturally occurring. Lizard and crimson is a good one, though. If I mix a lizard and crimson with like sap green or something, I can I can basically cover almost every flesh tone in, in, in most lighting situations. Uh, and here's what I was talking about: the cadmium orange is a good one to have because trying to mix cad yellow and cad red to get an orange, you can only get certain kinds of oranges. You can't get at least not readily. Um, so the, the, it helps to have these kind of secondary colors. It is a secondary color, actually. I kind of worked out. Let's see what else we got here. Thalo blue. Raw umber, it's a good earth tone. I almost feel like I should have got raw umber in 150 milliliters. These little ones are 37 milliliters. I think raw umber would have been fairly affordable, but I wanted to stay on a certain budget. Sap green is a really favorite green of mine. Let's see. Just like I think this is the last color. Maybe not. Burn umber. That's another earth tone. This thing is the last thing in the box. It is a brush cleaning tank. This is the kind of stuff that if I didn't go to art school, I wouldn't know. I needed this. I probably would have been able to figure out everything else. A brush, paints. Yeah, you need a brush and paints, but the difference between oils is they're, they're non-compatibility with water. So this thing, I basically take this mineral, odorless mineral spirits. Odorless is good because then you don't intoxicate everybody in your house. It's odorless for that reason. It cleans your brushes. It also can eat oil paints, basically. And you can thin oils with this. Generally, I've never used it with thin oils. I usually use light, Gaukid light and stuff like that, Gaukid mediums. I also was gonna get linseed oil. Linseed oil would extend the drying time, but it's also kind of like a medium. But you put the, you put the Gamsel into this brush cleaning tank, and the idea is when your brushes are um, saturated with oils, uh, you, you sit there and you, you fill this tank with the gamsel and then you clean your brushes and the spiral keeps the two separated like the dirty oil stuff will settle to the bottom and then eventually you can clean it by carefully pouring off the top layer of clean gamsel after it separates that's basically all you need to do oil painting right there the uh, raw umber burn umber yellow ochre titanium white ivory black these are my naturals Thalo blue, cad red, cad red. Oh, I already said that cad orange, I meant. Um, you have those. Cad yellow, sap green, primaries and tertiaries, and then Payne's gray, Indian yellow, blizzard and crimson, dioxazine purple. These are kind of like my colors, which aren't completely necessary, but definitely help to have. Uh, this is a good palette right here. I might add ultramarine blue, though, if I had more money. That's it. I also got this, some other artist goods recently. It should be helpful. Sweet. Is this the skull? Yes. I got a skull. Interesting. It's so weird pulling a skull out of a bag. <laughs> oh, look at that. That is a good representation um, of the proportions to study from. Actually, I'm impressed with the detail there. That's pretty good for 10 bucks. That'll be really helpful to study. I'm trying to learn human anatomy. What also should be helpful and what I'm really excited about is 
some artist books by Andrew Loomis, who was an illustrator. I have three of them. I got um, the figure drawing one. I got drawing the head and hands. So this one should be really good for, I mean, nothing, nothing beats Andrew Loomis. I mean, he's, well, actually, that's not even true. But he's really good. He's a good standard for learning, the, learning how to draw. I also got fun with a pencil. I think that one might have come in a different box. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching my first unboxing video all the way through. I appreciate it. You can uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm always going to be releasing new content. And um, I hope this helps in some way too because sometimes it's nice to hear what other artists are using as far as their palettes and what overlaps, what doesn't techniques, different things like that is nice to hear. So thanks for watching.